Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and to another video in which we will cover the top 10 ways to reduce the weight of an airplane, which benefits come from weight saving on airplanes and what the airport restrooms have to do with it. Let's shed some weight and let's get started. Let's go. Shuttle 7011 Heavy at Romeo, give way to traffic from the right. The operational expenses of an aircraft vary from airline to airline, but fuel is generally the highest expense with easily up to one third or even more of the total operating cost per flight. So it's not hard to understand that airlines have an interest in saving fuel to cut down the operational costs as much as possible. One way is to modernize their fleet with aerodynamically advanced aircraft and more improved engines, as discussed in this video right here. The other and also very effective way is to reduce the amount of fuel necessary to perform a certain flight is to reduce the overall weight of the aircraft. Now the simple relation between fuel burn and aircraft weight is the following. The heavier an aircraft is at takeoff, the more fuel it needs to burn to cover the same distance in the same amount of time as a lighter aircraft of the same type. Okay, a very simple example. Think of your car and its fuel burn from your apartment to your girlfriend's place 100 kilometers away. Now you are burning six liters per 100 kilometers. Now one day your girlfriend wants you to move in with her. You attach a trailer to your car, hence more weight, and you suddenly burn 8 liters per 100 kilometers. Makes sense, right? Now, engineers call that the marginal fuel burn rate, or the fuel to weight ratio. Now, on average, the MFB of a modern airliner is around 0.2 kilograms of fuel burned for every kilogram of weight per 1,000 kilometers flown. For example, if I wanted to fly from Berlin to Paris, which is roughly a thousand kilometers, and I weigh 85 kilograms, that means 0.2 kilograms of fuel times 85 kilograms of my body weight equals 17 kilograms of fuel burn just for me. Now, to compare that to your car again, you would have to probably use 60 kilograms of fuel for the same distance. Now, knowing that, how much money does an airline then save by reducing its aircraft weight? Let's find out by using a slightly weird but true example for our calculations. In 2009, all Nippon Airways from Japan had staff members placed around the gates asking the passengers to use the restrooms and empty their bladders before boarding. No, I am not kidding. Now the goal here was to leave as much extra weight as possible at the airport's restroom so the aircraft had less to carry. From a technical standpoint, the idea behind this was actually brilliant. Now, depending on the body size, the bladder of an adult male can hold up to 1.5 liters of urine. Yes, we're talking about pee in an aviation <laughs> related video. Now, women usually feel the urge to visit the restroom upwards of 250 milliliters. Now, for men, it's a little bit more, but let's think big and for the purpose of the video, assume that every passenger leaves 250 milliliters at the airport before boarding a 737-800 on a flight from Munich, Germany to Hurghada in Egypt, which is about a four-hour flight covering almost exactly 3,000 kilometers. Now, we neglect that urine is slightly denser than water and assume its density is one kilogram per liter. 189 passengers board our 737, each relieving themselves of 0.25 liters at the airport, resulting in a weight saving of 47.25 kilograms. Now, given our average MFB, this means we save around 9.45 kilograms of fuel per 1,000 kilometers. Now, when we multiply this by the distance we fly, we see that this measure saves a total of 28.35 kilograms or 21 liters of fuel on this trip. Now, with respect to the latest fuel prices and the fact that every kilogram of jet fuel produces roughly 3.15 kilograms of CO2, 
10.29 euros or 89.3 kilograms of CO2 have been saved on that flight. Yes, it doesn't sound like much, you might think, but we have to take a look at the bigger picture to determine the impact of this specific weight saving measure. Now in 2019, 8.5 trillion passenger kilometers were flown within that year. A trillion has 12 zeros. Now sticking to the values used in the first calculation, this means that if every passenger would have relieved themselves of 250 milliliters before boarding, a total of 425,000 tons of fuel could have been saved. Now this is equal to 314 million liters and the equivalent of 154 million euros and 1.3 million tons of CO2 saved. Let that sink in for a moment. While asking passengers to make a stop at the airport's restroom before getting on their flight might be one of the more extreme ways to reduce weight, there are certainly many other possibilities to do so. And here are the top 10 ways to save weight in an airplane. Number one, fly-by-wire. Now, since the fly-by-wire technology electronically evaluates and transmits the pilot's control inputs to the control unit, and then to the hydraulic actuators, there is no need for heavy mechanical rods, linkages and cables like on older airplanes had, thus reducing the weight a lot. A video about the fly-by-wire system right here. Number two, the paperless cockpit. Now the calculation clearly showed that even the smallest reduction in weight has an impact on the operational costs of an airplane. Therefore, reducing the numbers of operating items in the cockpit is a much welcomed solution, not only for weight reduction. Many airlines provide their pilots with tablets for those purposes. The EFB, which is short for the electronic flight bag, are not only lighter than a bunch of paperwork and charts, but they also make handling and retrieving necessary information a lot easier. Number three, composite materials. Yes, the future is now. It's a known fact that aircraft manufacturers are constantly working on improving their aircraft's efficiency, which results in them being more attractive to their customers, the airlines, which of course want to save as much money as they can with an efficient operation. To achieve this, the fuselage and the wings of modern airliners like the Boeing 787 and the Airbus A350 are made of composite materials, which are not only lighter, but also stronger than the common materials. Number four, the more electric aircraft design. Now the 787 Dreamliner being a so-called more electric aircraft does not feature a common bleed air architecture. This means it also doesn't need heavy piping for bleed air to be guided to the respective outlets. Now the 787 engines, for example, both feature a starter generator unit, which also acts as a starter during the engine start procedure and as an engine driven generator during normal engine operation. Now by combining the two parts in one, Boeing does not only save weight, but also space within the narrow engine casing. Number five, the advanced cabin interior. Now when ordering new airplanes, the weight of the interior items is definitely a factor to look at. In addition to that, airlines can also sort of revamp the cabins of their older airplanes to fit them with more modern and lighter seat designs, lighter carpets and lighter equipment like the trolleys. Number six, chrome free paint. Chrome is a metal used in aircraft coatings to prevent corrosion. Now it was the reason for the iconic polished and shiny look of many World War II airplanes. Nevertheless, it's extra weight and it's nowadays saved by using chrome free paints with the same effect. Number seven, use of rain repellent windshields instead of wipers. Now again, two wipers don't seem like a much of weight saving, but every gram counts in the long run besides the aerodynamical drag as well. Therefore, the use of special windshield coatings which provide a repellent effect is an alternative. It's not so much on jet airliners, but more sort of on regional commuter jets and turboprops. Number eight, replacing the life vests with floating seat cushions. Now careful with this one. 
This weight saving measure comes with a restriction. It is only approved and applicable if the airplane does not fly more than 50 miles offshore at any point. This limits the airliner's flexibility to use those airplanes, but if their major routes don't go over huge expanses of water, this method can save quite some weight. Number nine, changes to the in-flight service. Now this can be literally anything, starting with the reduction of the amount of ice used in cold drinks to the size of lime slices that you get in your Coke or even the number of salad toppings. American Airlines, for example, reduced the number of olives used in a standard salad by one and saved a lot of money throughout the years. And it's not just because they saved one olive per serving, but because of the fuel saved due to the actual weight savings. Number 10, just reduce the overall in-flight service. No hot meals means no ovens. No alcoholic beverages means that several cans can be saved. No in-flight entertainment means no extra technology built into the seats. No service at all means no need to carry any of the above. You get my point. Of course, this is directly connected to the passenger comfort and the quality of the flight experience. But hey, if you have to sacrifice something if you want to fly across Europe for the price of a burger menu with some large fries and a soft drink. At the end of the day, airlines are not selling seats, they are selling weight. So don't act surprised if you have to pay for your oversized luggage when flying with a low cost carrier. The moral of today's video, the more weight is reduced on planes, the more fuel can be saved, no matter how little the weight saving is, the masses make the difference. That's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. Here's your checklist. Subscribe to my channel, check. Activate the notification bell, check. Follow my Instagram account, check. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best, your Captain Joe. Ha <laughs> ha